This video is to introduce the topic of sustainable biomes. The learning goals for today are to introduce the topic, learn about key terminology, and learn about the purpose of this topic. So by the end of the lesson, we should be able to define sustainability, food security and biome, distinguish a biome from an ecosystem and a habitat, and also develop a rationale for the study of this topic. So why might this be worth um, studying? So firstly, what is sustainability? What is a biome? And what might differentiate between biomes? And then finally, how does a biome differ from an ecosystem and a habitat? Might be worth just pausing the video and thinking about these to see if you have any existing knowledge. Sustainability is one of the geographical concepts in the New South Wales syllabus, and it means the capacity of the environment to continue to support our lives and the lives of other living creatures into the future. So by looking at sustainable biomes, uh, our focus in this topic is actually primarily on sustainable food production and agriculture. And it's worth just pausing to think, well, why would we worry about sustainable agriculture? I would suggest that one reason we worry about this is because the number of people on the planet is increasing. The number of mouths to feed is increasing. So this year we have around 7.9 billion people. By 2100, we are heading towards 10 billion. So that's a huge increase. Most of this growth in the number of people is in developing countries where food security is already an issue. So food security um, refers to a state that exists when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food that meets their dietary needs and food preferences for an active and healthy life. It's quite a long definition, but essentially it just means that they have enough food to meet their needs. Now, one of the challenges of our time is that we're going to need to produce more food to feed these people uh, without further damaging the environment or exacerbating climate change. So this is quite a difficult task. It's going to require sustainable and innovative new agricultural methods to feed these people without further uh, degrading the planet. So we're quite lucky in Australia. We don't have a significant issue with food security, but that doesn't mean that it isn't already an issue internationally. So the Food and Agricultural Organization or the FAO of the United Nations produces an annual report called the State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World. The report they produced last year um, had some interesting facts that I wanted to share. So basically in 2019, close to 750 million people or nearly one in 10 people in the world um, were exposed to severe levels of food insecurity. And that number is actually increasing. So uh, food insecurity is the opposite of food security. So these people don't have enough food to meet their needs and their situation is actually severe. Uh, now, an estimated 2 billion people in total in 2019 didn't have regular access to safe, nutritious and sufficient food. So that's probably just over one in four people in the world didn't have access to regular, um, safe, nutritious and sufficient food. So we can see uh, that this is already an issue. Food security is already an issue and it's probably going to get worse based on the projected population increase. So I've spoken about sustainability, sustainable food production for the increasing global population. And we've spoken about food security and now it's already an issue. So let's move on to the second question, which is what is a biome? Why is a biome relevant? Why is this topic called sustainable biomes? So this topic is really about using different parts of the earth to produce food, different biomes. So a biome is a large area characterised by its vegetation, soil, climate and wildlife. So, for example, a desert biome. So there's definitely multiple deserts throughout the world, not just in Australia, but for example, in Africa and the Middle East. And they could collectively be considered a desert biome. So it's worth noting that we're focusing in this topic on terrestrial or land-based biomes. 
uh, because we're interested in their capacity to produce food. Um, and there are underwater biomes, but we will not be focusing on those in, in this topic. Um, it's also worth noting that um, the exact number of biomes, the exact classification of biomes, it's something that um, isn't settled. There is no definitive list. Um, scientists sort of disagree. But we will just be taking a very high level uh, perspective on the different types of biomes and not delving into too much detail because we're primarily interested in um, how people use biomes, change biomes to produce food and how this can be done sustainably. So then a third question was how does a biome differ from an ecosystem and a habitat? So a habitat is where a particular species uh, lives. So we can think of a koala. They live in eucalypt woodlands and forests. Uh, and ultimately their habitat where they live is defined by the presence of a select group of food trees. So koalas are going to be found where these food trees exist in higher numbers, normally in fertile, fertile soils and along watercourses. So particularly in Eastern Australia and Southeastern Australia. Then an ecosystem is a community of organisms and the non-living components like the soil of their environment, all interacting as a system. So that system involves nutrient cycles and energy flows from the sun, um, you know, into the plants, into the, into the animals, etc. So again, with the koala, we can think of the koala's role when they're feeding, they're breaking branches and dropping leaves, making them available to insects on the ground. Um, koalas are also a part of the food chain. They're getting eaten by larger carnivores, such as dingoes. So they're all connected in a system, an ecosystem. Okay, so we've gone one up, one level up from the habitat of a particular animal, the koala, and now we're considering how that koala interacts with all the elements um, in its environment, in its ecosystem. And so biomes go another level up again. So biomes can contain many ecosystems, which in turn can contain many habitats. So biomes are, again, those types of environments that stretch around the world or might be found around the world. It's really the largest scale. So just bringing it all together then, this topic, sustainable biomes, these critical inquiry questions are from the syllabus. This is what we'll be focusing on um, in this topic. So the first question is, what are the main characteristics that differentiate the world's biomes? Then how do people use and alter biomes for food production? The third question is, can the world's biomes sustainably feed the world's population? And then the fourth question is, what strategies can be used to increase global food security? So I think it's worth just pausing the video and just considering why are these questions worth your time? Why study this topic? And I just want you to have a think um, independently uh, to develop your own rationale for the study of this topic. And here are some ideas if you're struggling. So possibly uh, by studying this topic and actually a lot of topics in geography, um, you're identifying sort of macro, sort of high level trends um, that can help to inform your future decisions. So whether this is as an employee, you might be thinking about um, promising career paths or identifying um, employers that you think are doing the right thing, the ethical thing. Um, which can often result in good business outcomes. So that could definitely be one avenue, uh, one reason this is worth studying. Um, you could also find that this is useful as a in a potential business uh, sort of venture. If you're thinking about going into business, these macro level trends, these high level trends can help you to identify business opportunities. Um, and even if you don't want to start your own business, it might help you as an investor. So you might be aware that um, stocks in the stock market that um, are sort of more oriented towards sustainable technologies, green technologies, have been doing very well um, recently. And there are, you know, superannuation products um, that you can 
invest in um, that are oriented towards these sustainable uh, businesses and they've also been doing very well. So just having a bit of an awareness of these issues can help you to make uh, quite smart decisions as an investor. Um, now it can also help you as a consumer. You might think that uh, food security is a really uh, is a bit of a moral imperative, um, and you might be worried about how animals are treated, for example, as well. So it might just help to uh, sort of round out your understanding of this sort of environment and help you identify businesses you're happy to buy from. And then finally, um, it could help you make an informed decision when you vote. So it might make you um, aware of and care about uh, policy issues um, that could inform the way you vote as a citizen. So I've got a chart there and a book as well. Uh, the book is actually written by someone who um, advises major investment firms um, in, on Wall Street. So this sort of macro level trend analysis and predicting the impact that it might have on markets is itself a very big business. Uh, so it's certainly, if you don't have any sort of interest uh, per se in the, the moral aspects or the sustainability aspects, you may still think it's worth studying from a commercial point of view. And finally, this is a topical issue. It helps you to understand your world. Um, it might align with your existing interests and values. Um, as I was mentioning, for example, with sustainable um, purchases relating to you know, even your grocery shopping. And then just actively participating in this course will help you to develop your, your skills. Whether those are geography skills or just more general uh, literacy skills, comprehension skills, I encourage you to, to uh, make the most of your learning. So I hope this has been um, a useful introduction to the topic. Um, you should now have a fairly good idea and ability to define sustainability, food security and biome um, and then also be able to distinguish a biome from an ecosystem or a habitat and I hope also that you've been able to sort of develop a rationale for your study of this topic uh, that will help to motivate you through the course.